and we'll uh, first of all look at uh, make human. So make human, which I left the link for, is uh, from Carnegie Mellon uh, University. It is make human or make human community. It is very much a community oriented project. It has uh, tons of integrations with Blender, which is nice. Um, and it's really coming a long way and it looks really nice. Uh, it's, a, it's a good place. It's not really trying to get the photo real. Um, it's still a little cartoony, um, but it's, um, it has what's really its strength is its community that where people can create and you're welcome to create and add things to uh, the community. Um, and what's, but now it's all built in to the software. While it's opening up, okay. Let's give it a second. And I think Unreal's still loading in the background. We'll find out in an hour. I got spoiled teaching from home at my desktop for a year and a half. All right. So um, I don't know if you guys have uh, generated uh, avatars. This is Make Human. It starts off with a very neutral uh, avatar in there. Uh, and the interface is, um, it kind of moves from uh, creating the, uh, the main character, getting into more gender specific things. Uh, you can uh, tweak the face, tweak the torso, arms, legs. Uh, just use the random button if you want to. Then uh, if you go across the top, when you're not done modeling, you then uh, add-on geometry, in this case that means clothing. You can change the materials inside the clothing, inside the, the avatar itself. Then you can start animating and posing it, giving it rigs, and then if you need to, you can render it out. So you just go like left to right in, the, in these, these menu bars. If we go all the way back to modeling, we have the main one. And you see you have gender on a slider. Uh, it's an interesting conversation there. Uh, it, also has, uh, um, it also has ethnicity on a slider. So if you become more African, you become less Asian or Caucasian. That's, I didn't make the software, that's just the way it is. Um, but you have, uh, so you have all these different sliders, you can just dial in what you want, different proportions, how high they are. You can make them real old. All right. And you can go all the way down to making them into a baby. <laughs> there was that one moment when it had the old skin and the, and the, new, and the new geometry. <laughs> uh, and then uh, gender and whatnot. So once once you get into there, obviously you have a lot of uh, uh, stuff around uh, what they're calling gender, what I see just as boob sliders. Um, and then uh, a wonderful button about genitals. I won't do that in my screen recording, but you can really dial it in there. Uh, again, now you can get into just the face sculpting, um, all those settings, and it's by category. So you can do face, and then you can dial in the right eye, and you can dial in the left eye, and you can make each one asymmetry, and really get in the nose. So there's lots of details here, but it's keeping it very simple in that it's sliders, but it might frustrate some people who are more interested in being artists, or people who are good with stylists, that it's really just sliders and it's not fine tuning, but that it's, it's easier for some people to get into. So, torso, again, it's just, you know, all these different features to do stuff, arms and legs, uh, how, how much with the fingers to be spread apart and all that kind of stuff. The, uh, uh, my favorite one though is just to say, let's ram randomize it. And you may get something good and you might get something bad. All right, we got baby face, baby face Billy right there with the cone head, you know? I'm digging it, I like it, I like it. I, I think his name is Doc. So we're going to go with it. We're just going to give Doc some clothes. Doc obviously needs a fedora. Doc, D-O-C as in, yeah, he's the doctor. Doc, no, that also works. No. I think you might do a fedora and that's it, right, guys? That's a good, that's a good look for him. Nothing, nothing but a tie and a smile. Um, so you click the things off and then it gets rid of them. We give him a, a casual suit. There you go. That's, a, that's an interesting look there, too. And maybe you have to tur turn off the other ones, right? So, so th there's some clothes you can add in there. Uh, we can switch around the materials. But right now, it's like this, this like uh, uh, kind of uh, shiny skin, and you have all different kinds of 
old or young or different ethnicities. You can make, you can make it a tune. All right. And then um, uh, you can, before I go any further, I want to show this last tab. This is the, what they just added in. It used to be a lot of um, external stuff. One second. I have... Okay, I, uh, my light was on, so I knew my webcam was recording. All right, but this last tab is what really gets interesting. So this is now the whole database, and you just have to go online and like do all this searching around. But now what you can do is say synchronize, and it synchronizes the entire database. And then now here we can look at all the user-generated content. Do we want to look at? Okay, now it's synchronized. Do we want to look at different clothes and different poses, or different kinds of skin or, or different materials? different rigs and expressions. So this is where it can get kind of fun. Um, do I want custom clothes? It can also be where your project completely breaks. If you have any issues with the pipeline and you're using like a custom mohawk and it's something you get an error somewhere, it's the custom mohawk because the, you're, you're into the wild of what people are generating. So I'd say I want to have see all your clothes, update my list. And then here's just tons and tons of outfits that people have made that you can get into. And people have gone down some crazy rabbit holes on just like finding like I want to make Elvis and you can probably make Elvis or I want to again make Shrek and you can make Shrek or I want fairy wings you can make fairy wings you always have fun hair I want to have a really bad toupee well we can make a really bad toupee so anyway that, so come over to this community thing um, some other things on here is uh, uh, there's another tab called mass produce and this is a crowd generator uh, uh, you, you can actually generate like 30 or 100 characters at once. Obviously, it's to process them, but then it just like throws them out to like, what are your parameters? And I've actually made crowd scenes using this tool, and you just like give it like what 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 ranges of sizes and clothes you want, and then hit the produce button, and then it churns, and then you have a crowd scene. So there's some interesting features in here that that are worth playing around with, and um, uh, you know your mileage will, may vary. Let's see. So uh, in fact, here's why I mass produced ones that I've already made. I'm going to go back to, I don't want to do tune, I'll just do there. That's fine with me. And he can be barefoot. Good. So when I'm done, I want to, I want to uh, go into my pose settings. So we have pose animate. And I'm not going to get, it has skeleton rigs. Um, in fact, I've put in some, some custom rigs that work with motion capture. Um, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to, I want to use uh, it somewhere else. So I'm going to go over here to pose. And I just want to make sure it's in a T-Pose. So T-Pose will continue to use a motion capture over and over again. It's just kind of the easiest way for computers to understand the human form. Be like, oh, that's a human. Right? Oftentimes you model in what's called an A-Pose. A-Pose gives really natural curvature to the shoulders. But this is much easier to rig when you want to allocate what geometry is being bent by which bone. You want to really kind of separate out the, this armpit area so that you know this bone moves this and doesn't pull the chest with it and stuff so I'm going to keep it in T-Pose and now let's let's uh, export it we're going to go to file and if, first I would recommend maybe saving so you can give your human a name and we call him doc and then um, you, you're going to choose where you're going to save it and this is just saving the metahuman project itself so you can come back to it and edit it later on there's no sense in doing all this work and then losing it. So, this is dark. Save. And then now let's export it. And as we've been, uh, we've been explaining, we've been um, exporting it as um, FBX. What's cool is that there's also this thing called Make Human Exchange that Blender understands. Instead of exporting it and importing it to Blender, it goes straight into Blender which is pretty cool. And then you can do stuff you want to do with Blender. There's tons and tons of different workflows and tons of plugins. Uh, but we're going to kind of keep it as simple as possible. And we're going to use uh, FBX. Export it. I didn't choose what folder to put it in, so let's see where it went. It went to my downloads. That's fine. Cool. So uh, step one being done. We're going to uh, pop over to um, 
Mixamo, which is uh, Adobe's library of characters and animations. You can choose um, a, a character from here as well. Um, the characters aren't as standardized. Uh, there, there's like a lot of there's a lot of characters that are a little more complicated than we want to deal with just now, but there's tons of characters here if you want to play with some of these. Uh, they're very cartoony. But we're going to go over to animations and we're going to upload our character. If your character doesn't upload, if it, if it, if it has an error or something like that, there is um, help here about file types. There's, very, there's various ways of uploading characters. Let me know if you have an issue with your FBX. We're going to try FBX first. So let's go to secondary downloads and let's see if it uploads with textures or not. So now they accept FBX version two, 2019 which is fairly new and it supports a lot more. It doesn't air out as much. Yeah. Yeah, you know, we're, we're definitely the is better. So it didn't bring in the textures. Um, I am going to use Blender as a proxy, which is good for us to get a Blender. The other, the other way of doing it, it would be to export it as a, there's two, it actually gives it two different aesthetics. There's an OBJ file, because OBJ file is just geometry. FBX includes the rig, but we don't have a rig yet. So if I export it as OBJ, it's gonna have, it's gonna have two different looks. Um, but we'll try this one first. That's exporting to my downloads. Wait for Blender to respond. So now I have from uh, make human. I have an OBJ. OBJ. It has a corresponding MTL, being material file. I can zip these two together. You can also zip up your FBX file, or we can do it right in the end. All right. So making a uh, one way of doing it. And now. I'm going to close Make Human because this laptop can't handle all this. So let's try again uploading the character and let's do the OBJ and MTL zip together. Is it missing a PNG file? <laughs> Let's bring it into Blender real quick and I'll show you how to make sure we pack the textures inside of Blender. Let's open up that FBX that we started off with. My downloads and I got doc right here, doc FBX. And let's go bring them in. Look at textures. A little frustrating. All right, so there are some textures on here. There you go. So um, sometimes you can pass things through a digital content creation tool. That's why it's good to have them always on your computer. Again, Blender is free. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and export this one as an. F I know that sounds silly that I just brought it in as an FBX, but I'm going to export it as an FBX. But I'm prepping it because Blender has the option of making sure that I copy all the texture files into 
the model. We're gonna do this. We're gonna do this a bunch of times. This class is using Blender to make sure that we, our FBXs are wet, prepped for export. So that I did two things. I made sure that the path for the te the the textures are copied into the file, and then by clicking that, it makes sure that the textures are embedded. And so now, I think all the other settings should be fine. I'm just gonna uh, call it doc for Mixamo. Doc for Mixmo. And we'll save it. Cool. And we'll try one more time. Upload. Doc 4. Let's see what happens. It seems like it's taking a little longer. That's good. That means it was textures are going in. Every I've been doing this for so long and every time it's a, it's a crapshoot. But the goal is to not give up. Let's go ahead and prep our scene for it. We have Doc. I don't know what we're compiling shaders for. That's what's slowing everything down. I'm going to make a little folder for skeletal meshes. And I'll make a folder for Doc. So close. If this doesn't work, I'm gonna be disappointed. This table's getting super hot. <laughs> Well, it's gonna, well, it's, I think it's going to pop in. It has, it has, I think it's not showing it, but you can see that it has skin. I think it's just not showing it. So we're going to work with it anyway. Uh, what's important is I think the, the material IDs are still there. So let's do chin. I think it's just too heavy for it. So what we're going to do is we're going to rig it. And uh, this is an old way of, uh, this is kind of, uh, if you're used to After Effects and doing motion tracking After Effects, this is kind of the same thing. Adobe used the kind of same interface. We should identify the different parts of the body. And if you rig it in Mixamo, groin just means where we think the hips generate from. So if they have like, you know, low dress, you still want to get where the hips generate from. And then sometimes you have some weird shoulderness, and it's really where you put the elbows. Uh, and you, you can turn off symmetry if you want to, and like if it's a symmetrical character. But you have to kind of be careful where you put the elbows. If you put them too close to the, um, the shoulders, they end up having a different look. So you can always redo it if it comes out a little wonky. But in general, we're going to make it find all five of our fingers per hand. And I'll say next. And so now it's doing its uh, auto-rigger algorithm. And it's going to figure out the, the, the body. So there are auto riggers inside of um, all these digital content creation tools as well. This is just the most simple way to show everyone, um, and it's free. Um, there's intuitive ones in Maya, some of 4D. So if, you, if you've chosen one, you want to learn how to rig inside of the, those softwares, let me know, and I can give, show you, point in the direction of how to do auto rigging in other tools. Um, but it's pretty, pretty kind of funny how we've like fixed some pretty important projects using Mixamo's auto rigger. So. Woof, this is so slow. All right. Here we are. Everything's rigged. Even the fingers are ready to go. Okay? It's it's uh, pretty straightforward. 
Uh, I'm pretty sure the textures are there. They're just not embedded, or they're they're too heavy to be shown, or something. And so we have our character. So the first thing I want to do is I just want to download my character. I want to have my character in a T pose that I'm going to uh, um, install, uh, import into Unreal. It's already in T pose. So that's how I exported it out of um, out of uh, uh, Make Human. So I'm just going to go ahead and download it. The first download uh, gives me an option just saying, do you want to have the original pose? If it had been an A pose, it would have T posed it for me maybe. Uh, but I just want it as this FPX file T pose. All right. So now we have our new character downloaded or downloading. Why is the internet slow here? Am I on a weird network? Oh, and the legacy. I don't know. We'll keep it. We'll keep it legit. Legacy. So while it's downloading, let's find some interesting animations. Uh, I'm not really uh, too. Let's just do. Let's do flips. Let's see if we can make a flip. That's all I care about, are flips. Yes. Yes, all of them. So once we add them in, we see flips. So he's kicking off a wall. So I, I, if I have a wall in my scene, I can put him right in there. Um, we can adjust how, uh, if the character was larger or skinnier, we can adjust the character's arm space, right? How far out it's doing things. All right, so this gives maximum space. The hands are further out or if we want it to be tighter to the, the torso. But look, it goes through the torso, so that's way too much. It's like he's... <laughs> that's not the look I want. Uh, so then we can trim it and all that kind of stuff. And then mirror, mirroring flips it. So I'm going to go ahead and download. And now we already have our character. This is the most important thing for today. The most important lesson is we're going to import our character into Unreal. And then from then on, we're only applying animations to the character. We're not continuing to uh, upload additional characters with individual animations. We want all our animations to be applied to one character. That'll be very, that's just like the most essential workflow and the most essential lesson for today. So I do not need a skin. I'm going to just download the motion data. I don't need any other cha changes to the settings, and I will download. And it downloads it with the name of Run to Flip. Cool. Let's go over to our initial download for a character, which we will now call it was doc four, but now it's doc t pose, so it's doc t pose the fourth is our character. And let's do an import. Right here. And we drag it in. Give it a second to show up. There we go. Now it can be imported. And it's doing its thing. There's also an import button right there on the left side. So let's do the settings. I'm just going to reset the default. All right. So by default, it recognizes that there's a skeleton in there. So it says, yes, it's, it's skeletal mesh. And yes, this is the first time I'm importing it. So I want to import the mesh. Great. Everything else should be fine. There might be an issue with scale, depending on how I, I export it from uh, Make Human. But let's just go ahead and say import all. Give it a second to bring in all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Great. I'm going to show something in the content browser. We will verify whether or not we have some materials or textures. Um, I see right here it says uh, a warning that there is no smoothing group. That's kind of Unreal being a snob and saying, oh, you didn't use Maya. Um, well, we can also do that in Blender. Um, I, it was an export setting I did not choose. Uh, say export, when you say FBX, uh, come down here to geometry and say you want the smoothing to be on the faces. And then that takes care of that no smoothing group error. Uh, just something from experience that I've run into. Again, that's not, a, excuse me, it's not an error, it's a warning. It's a warning. It means it, as long as it's not broken, it's, it's fine. Cool. And so now we have, it looks like we have some textures here. Looks like we have some uh, materials here. We've got the compile shaders to get into it. But let's go ahead and save all. Yep. 
And then let's throw this laptop out the window because it's not sufficient for teaching and recording OBS at the same time. Let's go ahead and close some stuff. Let's go Slack. Let's find some other animations while we're waiting. Um, that looks amazing. I can do that. There you go. Again, without scan. And I like the idea of doing a flip kick. Maybe a little aggressive. Cool. Let us dig into the nature of our computer and see if it's freaking out or not. So we're using mainly CPU and it's mainly OBS. Yeah. What is my setting? We will...